Uh, I'm curious if you like those. I don't. I mean, actually, I don't even know if I've eaten one because they just look chalky. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 125 of the Love and Stitches podcast. It is the first podcast of the new year and we've had a really long break from the podcast. There were was one podcast I think in December and now it is the beginning of January. So it's our first podcast for 2022. I have missed you all so much in this podcasting. I have lots to show you today to catch up since the last podcast. If you have been following along with me all of December with Vlogmas, you will have seen a lot of these projects, but Vlogmas ended on December 23rd was the last day that I recorded. And so I've done a little bit of knitting <laughs> since then. So lots to show you. Um, also, we have some new segments for the podcast starting in the new year. We closed out the Q&A part of the podcast and I am going to have a new segment every single week of the month. So it will repeat where I will have like the same four segments that rotate but I'm not going to tell you what they are all at once. You're just going to have to come back week to week and see what all the new segments are. So I'm excited about that. This is my fourth year, going into my fourth year of podcasting. I started in 2019. So 2019, no, yeah, 2019, 2020, 2021. 2021. And now we're in 2022. So going into my fourth year and I'm very excited and it's gonna be fun to have some changes and some different things. So if you have been with me since episode one, or you've come and found um, this podcast and gone back to episode one, let me know in the comments, just say like, hey, I've been here. I've seen you since the beginning because I just feel like that's so amazing and so cool that you have been with me for this long and that's very exciting and thank you so, so much. Okay. Let's go ahead and just dive right in. Oh, I forgot to say I am wearing one of my um, sweatshirts from my Spreadshirt shop. Spread shop. Spreadshirt shop. Um, this is from the Definition Collection. These are no longer available. They were limited time, so this design is retired. There's actually, it's the cowl, I think it's called like cowl neck, asymmetrical cowl neck hoodie because it's got a giant hood which is awesome because it's really cold here today. It's supposed to snow, but I haven't seen any snow yet. Let's make sure my hair is okay. <laughs> um, so these are no longer available. There's actually nothing in the shop right now because I have made a new logo. It's probably already here on YouTube, um, but I am going to be uh, re- stocking the shop at the end of January. So check back, there will be t-shirts, sweatshirts, mugs, all kinds of things um, in the shop coming very, very soon. So hang tight and that will all be there. Let's start with a finished object. I have finished my long summer cardigan. So we were traveling for several weeks over the holidays. And when we got back, I was like kind of just diving right into work and I haven't even unpacked my knitting bag yet. So I haven't blocked this yet, <laughs> but it is done. And I would love to show you, this is a Black Pearl Magic bag. Black Pearl is P-U-R-L. Yeah, P-U-R-L. Okay, so my first finished object to share is my long summer cardigan. This is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli that I started in August of 2021 and my bowl of labels hang tight um this is one of many projects that i am using moon glow yarn for um so this is moon glow yarn company and the main color is called aspen and then throughout the cardigan all the contrast colors they're all different it's a fade set that Whitney of Moonglow yarn um, designed for me called the love and stitches fade set I think there's still a few ends here yeah there's still a few ends let me get this sweatshirt off 
and we can try on the cardigan. It's gonna look different, of course. Oh, that cowl neck sweatshirt has a tight neck. Oh, there we go. Um, here you go, Toaster, you can take that for now. The sweater's gonna look a little different when I block it. I am leaving the ends here on the sleeves for now because I think there's a chance I knit them too long. So once it blocks, it will be easier for me to take it back if the end is still out. So I've left that out for now. Let me scoot back. Okay, here is my long summer cardigan. It fits great. I love this style of drop shoulder and you have seen this a lot so I'm not gonna go too far into it. Um, but I will be blocking it and probably this will come up in my year in review video um, and I'll post some pictures on Instagram. But right now, it's like not quite to the knee, but I expect it to stretch at least a few inches. I love it and it took a really long time, but it is a relatively easy pattern. So if you are in for the long haul of knitting miles of stockinette and twisted ribbing, then go for it. This is the pattern for you. I think the results are worth it and I really like the fade. So I'm excited to get this fully done, blocked, and so that I can wear it. All right, next up, I finished a pair of socks for my friend over the holidays. I still have it in my Christmas bag. I'm not ready to let go of Christmas quite yet. Um, so these socks, oh, see, now I can toss this label. Actually, I might keep it because I might talk about that later. Um, okay, this yarn is from Stitch Together Studio. And the colorway is called Spooky Harvest. It was an October colorway. Now I am tossing that. Toaster looked at it like, <laughs> what was happening? I have not blocked these yet either, but I did bring over my sock blockers so that I can put them on blockers to show you. So I just did a simple sock pattern on these, but they were the first time I made socks for a friend and kind of customized them to him and had him try, try them on along the way. And so I'm really pleased with how they came out. They're like a perfect fit. Um, and this is for a guy, so they're a little bigger than my sock blockers here, but no matter. I think I did 64 stitches for the most part. And he's like a min size 10 maybe. Um, so they came out really, really nicely. I worked on these for way entirely too long. And so I'm really glad that these are finished and I can just finish, <laughs> finished and I can get them blocked and gift them to him very, very soon. So that's another project done. I'm telling you, I was getting lots of stuff done here. And then I have one more project that we could consider a finished object. And it's not really a finished object, but it's like a project that I'm setting aside for now because I've finished a whole segment of it, if you will. And that is one of my advent projects, my scrappy grannies. I just love how these look in a stack. So one of my advent calendars, my Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations advent calendar, I have been getting it for, I got it four years in a row. This is the fourth year. And every year I've made one granny square a day using my free pattern called Scrappy Granny. It's just a granny square. So if you already know how to make them, you're good, but I've got tutorials and stuff in it and it's a free pattern. So if you want some guidance, you can follow along. Um, but I made one square every day this year and for the previous three years. So now I have, I think it's 96 squares. And so I am ready to stop making squares, I believe. I think this was my last year. And at some point, I'm not planning to do it anytime soon, I am going to take each of these squares and find a neutral color. I'm thinking like a light gray probably. And I will do one more round around each square. And as I do that, I'm going to join them. There are several tutorials on, on YouTube that have like granny square join as you go. And that's what I'm planning to do. But because I've already finished all these off, I'll be adding an additional round while I join as I go, if that makes sense. So I could just join them 
and they would have like one half round or a round in between but I'm gonna do like a full round and join them I don't know I haven't quite figured it all out yet and I'm not really looking into how to do it until I'm ready mentally <laughs> to do it but these are the 24 squares I created in 2021 and they just look so beautiful together. I love it. So it's sort of a finished object, but not really. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people just like you and me. So I first joined Skillshare early last year before I took Nitty Natty full time. I knew as a new business owner, there was going to be so many new skills that I needed to acquire. And I wanted to go straight to the experts rather than searching online for videos on my own. So I have taken classes on video editing, on productivity, on organization, and I am so ready for this new year to take that up to the next level. Next up on my watch list is a class called Designing the Life You Want, Four Exercises for Clarity and Motivation by Michelle B. I really can't think of a better way to start off the year than taking this class and making some intentional goals for the year, especially after how crazy the last two years have been. And like most classes, this one is under 60 minutes, so it's super easy to fit into my day. Use my link below to join today and get completely free access for one month to the thousands of classes on Skillshare. Start exploring your creativity today. Time to dive into some whips, and I have some new ones and a lot of progress to show you as well. So the first, let's start with the, the oldest one. So this is in my Sockmas bag from this year. It is my first Sockmas sock. <laughs> I never even cast on the second set of Sockmas socks, but I have finished one, and I think I finished it pretty recently. <laughs> So yeah, that's how Sockmas went for me this year with all the chaos. You know what? This sock blocker is way too big, so I'm just going to hold this up. Okay, so this is the Mountain Mist yarn in the Castle at Night colorway. So this was one of the Sockmas sponsors for 2021. And our theme was Christmas at the castle, at the Disney castle. So all of these colors are designed to look like the castle when it's lit up, like all the projections in the fireworks show. And she included some minis. I used two of them. I used this color for the cuff and the toe. And then I used a different one for the heel. I did my fish lips kiss heel, like always. These are just for me. And oh, I have still have my little wreath on there. So cute, and all of these products are retired now, but we will do Sockmas again this year, so in a year's time, <laughs> it will be back. And let's see, I have just started the toe on the other one. I finished all the increases, so my main colors joined in, and this project is ready to just, you know, if I go to the movies, if I'm out walking around, it is ready to go for me. So that sock is in a really, good spot. My other project that I've been working on and made a lot of progress, I can't even remember if this one ever got onto a podcast or not because I am not certain I have started it. But anyway, this is one of my advent projects as well. And it is the Sea Glass Tea by Wool and Pine Designs. <gasps> I don't know if you just heard that, my stomach just growled. <laughs> it's lunchtime. Okay, this is the Sea Glass Tea, and I am using Moon Glow Yarn Company, <laughs> and I have uh, her advent. So I'm using, um, let me back up. I'm using Cottonwood Breeze as my main color, and then I'm using the Moon Glow Advent as my mini skein. So this project can be knit up in so many different ways. You can use scraps for the entire thing, but I knew I wanted to use my Advent calendar. And Whitney suggested to use a neutral color um, to alternate, this is color work, one by one color work, so to alternate with the Advent. And I'm really glad that she suggested that because I think it looks great and it kind of like 
tones down the rainbowness of it even though I'm loving the rainbowness of it I realized if I hadn't had a main color I would have been alternating like days one and two together days three and four and I don't know if that would have looked quite as good I mean it could be really cool too so I have made it through let's see one two three these are really close four five six seven eight days and I've just started adding in the ninth day and the intention was to do them every day, but obviously that didn't happen over December. So now I'm just working on it throughout January and February, I'm sure as well, because I'm not pushing myself to do one a day or anything. So I've just gotten to the point where I'm going to divide for the sleeves and I tried it on. I think I have a picture here of when I tried it on and it fits great. So I just need to sit down and split for the sleeves and I will continue going on that. I heard a rumor that Whitney might relist her rainbow advent calendars if anyone wants to make this sweater. So make sure you're following her on Instagram. She's at Moonglow and check out her Etsy shop. She might have, um, actually, you know what? I think she has a new website. So go to Instagram and go to her site from there and you can see if she's got those rainbow advent calendars available. Okay, I've got one more project. This project is so new, it doesn't even have a project back yet. <laughs> and it is going to be a hat, can't you tell? <laughs> Let me see, did I bring, I did. So this yarn, I don't know how to say this correctly. So, Volmit there, Verf. You can correct me here, I don't know. And it doesn't have a color name. All I can see is the color number. So that's not super exciting. So we're just gonna call it confetti because I think it looks like pink confetti and it's awesome. So this is one skein I have split into two because the hat that I am knitting is a DK weight pattern. So I'm holding two yarns, two fingering weight, one fingering weight yarn split into two and I'm holding it double so that I can have a DK weight gauge. This is a great hack, especially if you have a lot of fingering weight yarn in your stash and you wanna knit it up quickly and actually use it all because socks don't often use a full skein. You can split it in half, hold it double. You don't even have to split it in half. You could wind one cake and pull from the outside inside, but that gets really tangled for me, so I prefer two. And then you can knit DK weight things like hats. As long as you pick a one skein pattern or whatever. So I have barely started this little hat. All you can see is the two by two ribbing. And to be honest, I am still deciding if I like the way that it looks because you can definitely see that it's two strands. I mean, obviously I'm like looking at it real up close. So as I go on, I think it's gonna be less distracting as I'm wearing it, I don't think like you know, and the average person would definitely not notice. A knitter would probably notice if you were, they were like really looking, but it's probably gonna be fine. So I'm just um, disclaimering that in case I change my mind, <laughs> that I might not totally enjoy the way it looks, but it's really easy to knit, it's not a problem. So the hat that I am making is called Multnoma Falls by Kay Hopkins. I have to look at my notes because I can't say it. Multnomah Falls hat by Kay Hopkins. And we are knitting this in the membership, the Love and Stitches membership, this month for January because we are doing a cables make along and this is a cabled hat. So as I do more, you will see what it's going to look like. But I am extremely excited about this color. I love it. And I know I'm going to get lots of wear out of hats now that we're in New York City. Welcome to the first new segment of the podcast. We're gonna call this one Plans and Dreams. In the first podcast of every month, I'm gonna share with you some of my plans for the month like that I actually expect to do or make goals towards. And then I'm gonna share some dreams, which are just some patterns that I've been seeing or maybe even some products that I have been, you know, kind of lusting after, but I know it's just a dream. I'm just going to share it with you. Maybe you wanna put it on your queue, but I know it's not gonna happen for me. Maybe later in the year. 
So let's talk about plans. I do not have a solid knitting plan for this month because I have a lot going on this month personally, work-wise, and other stuff. So I am not going to make my knitting stressful at all this month. That's pretty unlike me, but I'm trying to have a theme this year where I don't put too much on my plate. <laughs> I know, crazy concept, right? And that goes with knitting too. I don't want to put too much on my plate because knitting should be fun, knitting should be relaxing, and it totally is, but I always feel i um, disappointed in myself when I'm not reaching my goals in all areas of life. And so I'm just going to say, you know what, make my knitting goals achievable and then that will make me feel better. So I really don't have like anything firm or solid for this month in particular, um, but I have two projects I do want to finish. One of those is the, the socks that I showed earlier where I have one sock done. I'd like to finish the second sock and have those done because they were from December. And then because we are knitting along in my membership, I know that I will get this hat done. So I want to finish this hat. So one sock, one hat. That's it for the month. I'll be knitting on my sweater, of course, too. I've got some other things in the works, but I don't want to do too much in such a busy time of year. So if you're seeing everyone making their like make nines and goals for the year and you're like, I just can't, like it's too much. I'm still trying to catch up from last year. Use this month to kind of catch up, clear your needles, organize your stash, and you can make a plan in February. You can make a plan, the stomach keeps growling. You can make a plan like January 20th. Like it doesn't matter just because it's January 1st or the first week of January, it doesn't mean you have to do a reset. You can do it when it works for you. Um, I have one other goal for this month and that is to put out a pattern in the, the first of February. So I am already working on it. So let me grab that. Um, and this is the third Moon Glow <laughs> project. It's all you is like a Moon Glow heavy. So I have not designed a pattern in 18 months. I think the last pattern that I put out was in 2020 in the summer. So it's been a really, really long time. So many reasons for why. Um, but I am just like ready to do this again there. I'm getting better at making it a priority. And so I am going to be designing hopefully many patterns this year, but just for January, again, one thing at a time, not trying to overwhelm myself. I am planning to release my first pattern of the year, which is a sock design with moon glow yarn company. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I'm I'm sorry. I know that's like a braggy thing to say, isn't it? But I was working on this last night in the dark. Like, you know, it obviously it wasn't daylight outside. And so I haven't actually looked at it fully in daylight yet. And I'm really pleased with how it's looking. So this is the Sweetheart Sock. And Whitney has come up with these colors to look like those Sweetheart Conversation Heart deals that are the you know iconic candy for february for valentine's day uh i'm curious if you like those i don't i mean actually i don't even know if i've eaten one because they just look chalky <laughs> but if you like them i am curious and you should like leave a comment and say that you like them because we need to see if there's anyone in the world that does <laughs> and when I was reading about them, I think that they, the company that used to make them got sold. And so they didn't make them for like a year. And people were like, like when I Google searched them, people were like, um, where can you get conversation hearts? I can't find them anywhere. And then I guess they brought them back a year later, which might've been last year. And so I guess people are eating them or decorating with them or something. But anyway, what am I trying to show you? So the Sweetheart Sock set comes with this as the main color. I actually don't know what color that is. It's a cream. And then it comes with six minis. Here's five of them. So fun, right? They're kind of just like, I would say they're like bright pastels. Because they're pastels, but they're definitely not like chalky. <laughs> and then the last one I have here attached to my sock. So it's a purple color. So this is a Colorwork sock design. And it is going to come out on February 1st. I've already got testers um, working on it. 
and I will show you more once I finish it next week. But the leg has color work on it and I've designed it in such a way, you know what, I didn't mean to talk about this this much. Let me save that. <laughs> Basically, I designed it in such a way you can knit over your ends. Okay, I'll stop talking. But um, I will share more about this as it's done, but the point being is that this is a plan to finish and publish for the month and get the ball rolling this year for a year of releasing several patterns. If you would like to be a pattern tester, stay tuned. Um, this pattern already has testers, but I am, um, once I kind of get through most of January, I'm going to reevaluate how I pull pattern testers because I had a lot of responses to that one. And so just kind of stay tuned. I will either inform um, everyone on Instagram or here or both how I'm going to do that. Okay, let's talk about dreams. I have some patterns that I have been seeing on Instagram lately that have really caught my eye. And the first of those, actually this is one I didn't see on Instagram. I've just had this one in my queue forever. And because Kay and Lindsay are doing a, uh, what do they call it? I know it's a cabled sweater cowl or mal, but I'm not sure exactly what it's called. I have re-fell in love with the All of the Lights cardigan by Hoagie Locatelli. I want to make this so badly. I am not casting it on right now because theme, not putting too much on my plate, but I would like to make it at some point. It's been in my queue ever since it got released in like January 2019 or something like that, but I just love it so much and I really want to make it. So I'm kind of putting that on the back burner thinking about maybe in the fall, I could do that for the fall garment make along this year. Um, not, not committing to it, but I could potentially do that because I just, I haven't fallen out of love with that pattern in three years. So I really, really like it. The second one, this is a new one, the Interpretations Volume 8 that Hohe Locatelli does. I can't recall if she's still doing it with Vera Falamaki yet because I just looked at her pattern, so I'm not actually sure, but I know this is her pattern. Um, it is The Lounger by Hohe Locatelli. It is a, hold on, I pulled it up here to make sure I get the details right. It is a worsted weight jacket, coat kind of a thing. It's just like straight lines, looks super cozy, it's long, and I adore it. Am I gonna make it right now? No. Do I hope that some people on my feet are making it? Absolutely. <laughs> I want to see this, you know, come to life in different yarns and colors and see people wear it because I think it's really, really great. And then I have got one more and this is a sweater. I guess I'm really into sweaters right now. This is a pullover sweater by Wool and Pine Designs. It is called Broadleaf and this is a beautiful brioche sweater. It's got this intricate design. You can do it on the front and back or just the front and do stockinette on the back. It's got that like drop shoulder thing that I really like. I think really looks good on me and a lot of people. And so I'm really into that. I'm, I am knitting wool and pine design sweater right now. So I'm really into following their patterns. Um, and I just think it's like a spectacular design. Um, I believe it has a lot to do with the yarn and the model because they always do a really great job of taking their photos. But whenever I see others knit these wool and, wool and pine design patterns, they always look fantastic. So those are a few of my plans for the month of January and some dream knits for later on. I've got a few quick announcements. The first one is that the membership is currently open for the first quarter of the year. So things have changed with the membership a little bit and it is not going to be open every month anymore. Instead, it's only gonna be open quarterly. So you'll be able to sign up in January right now, April, July, and October. I don't know if I have that exactly right, but basically every three months it will open up for a week and then it will close. So when you sign up, you are signing up for the quarter. You can pay monthly or you can save by paying for all three months at once, but you are signing up for three months at a time when you join with us. We have so much fun in the membership. I will leave the link for all the details down below so that you can go check that out. It's, um, I, 
think it's worth it. <laughs> I, I have so much fun. I know a lot of our members returned from 2021 to 2022. So come and join us. We have a great time. It will close for January on Friday, which is tomorrow. So be quick on Friday, January 7th at 11:59 PM Eastern time. So if you're in a different time zone, make sure that you sign up early on Friday so that you don't miss out on the membership because it won't open again until April. So link is down below if you want to sign up or find out more information and join us and send me any questions that you have, preferably by email so that I can see them quickly and answer them. And then I'm going to have my year in review video. Typically, I try to get that out on the first of the month, but it has just been really busy since I got back home. And as you can see, I have a lot of projects that need blocking. And so I am going to be putting that out next week on Tuesday. So look out for the year in review then. There is a siren going off, so I don't know how loud that will be for you. If it gets closer, I will stop for a minute. Um, but let's talk about some life updates. So if you were already following along with me in December, then you got to see a lot of what our month was all about. Every single day in December, I put up a, I'm not every single day, the 1st to the 25th, I put up a vlog. Um, I showed basically just the things that we were doing in that day. And of course I showed my advents, my yarn and my projects as well. So we had a lot of fun. But just to recap, um, we spent the first half of the month here in New York City. We got to do a few things like Christmassy things around, like we saw the tree at Rockefeller Plaza. We went ice skating in Bryant Park. Um, I don't know, that's it. We didn't go to any shows or anything like that, and I kind of regret that. I wish we'd probably done more, but we were so busy getting ready to leave town because we were actually out of town the entire second half of December um, for like 18 days or something. So we first went to Florida to visit Kent's mom and we rented a car and drove there all in one day. <laughs> it was a really long day. I think we left at like 4.30 in the morning and got to Florida at 11 p.m at night so we actually did pretty good and we drove so that we could bring um toaster with us because it's really expensive to board him here in the city and plus we would rather have him with us and we wanted him to get to see um kent's mom's dog bailey so there's a little bit of that in vlogmas the two of them are super cute together and they hadn't seen each other since we moved to new york last april march i guess we were in the process of moving in March. Um, so they're really excited to be together. So we spent a week in Florida, we did some Disney stuff, um, we worked, I mean, it was like a half vacation. And then we packed up the car and we drove to Tennessee, to Nashville, to see my family. And we were there for actual Christmas. So all of my siblings came home from you know, the various places that they live. Uh, one of my brothers lives in Nashville, so he was already there. And we got to spend Christmas as an entire intact family. My my immediate, I guess it's not my immediate family anymore because that's Kent, but like my parents and all of my siblings were home at the same time. And I just don't know how many more years we're gonna get to do that. So it was really great. We had a super low key Christmas. Basically my mom like cooked everything we could ever want which was amazing and we spent time together. We also worked while we were in Tennessee. Um, so <laughs> it was a busy time, but it was really, really good. And then we stayed there for about a week, packed everything up and drove in one day back to New York. And that was um, almost, a, that was exactly a week ago. We were driving, no, less than a week ago. <laughs> I guess we were driving on a Tuesday. So anyway, not that that matters, but we had a really great time and I'm just grateful that we were able to do that with the flexibility of our jobs and that our families were so cooperative and great and let us stay for a week. We ended up making it a super long vacation, but a super affordable one because we stayed with family and we just did some low key things. So we really, really enjoyed that. Um, right now in New York City, things are pretty quiet. Um, it has been, um, you know, things have kind of been 
and like we've kind of had like an outbreak here and so people are tending to err on the side of caution and not really go out and do very much um we did walk around times square um on new year's day at like three o'clock in the morning when things were emptied out because we just wanted to see what it looked like and we were able to watch the ball drop from our bedroom window <laughs> so that was really really cool but we didn't like do anything out for new year's eve anything crazy but if we're here next year i think that would be really fun i don't want to go to like the actual ball drop or anything because i hate crowds but i would like to be out um for new year's it was kind of cool because we had we opened up our windows it's like 50 degrees that day it was warm and you could hear people like shouting on the streets and we could see fireworks in Central Park and fireworks going off at um, Times Square and it was it was really super cool. Um, so that was a lot of fun. But other than that, we're just like low key here. There is a um, uh, like a clinic that we can see from our window. And yesterday the line for tests was a whole long block. So it's not great. <laughs> so we're gonna keep a low-key winter here in New York City, which honestly is fine by me. I got a couple requests for this, so I want to add in a mini section here of just like listening, watching, and reading that'll just go really quickly in life updates. So what I am watching right now, we just started and finished WandaVision. Kent had already seen it, but I hadn't seen it yet, and so we watched it through together his second time, my first. And I loved it. I love Marvel. I love Avengers. I saw the new Spider-Man movie twice. It's awesome. So I really enjoyed that. And if you haven't seen it yet and you like all of those movies, you should watch it. It's on Disney+. Plus. So that's what we've been watching this past week. I have been listening to a an audio podcast called The Perfectionism Project by Sam Laura Brown. And it has been amazing for me. Um, to kind of start to realize in the past couple months how I am totally a perfectionist and it doesn't mean I do things perfectly. It kind of means that I like get in my own way with stuff because I just won't start something unless I know I can do it like completely with like all these plans and details and then I just end up procrastinating and not getting anything done. And so if you are, if you can relate to that, you should listen to the Perfectionism Project on, you can listen on like Spotify or Apple Podcasts by Sam Laura Brown. And you will be like shocked at how she hits the nail on the head for like how you feel. I have been loving it and learning so many tips. And then I've been reading the Bridgerton, uh, series. I don't know how many are in the series. I read the first book a few months ago and then I have been reading the second book and I'm really excited for the second season of Bridgerton to come out um, on Netflix. I don't know when it does but I will be watching it when it does and I have I wouldn't say I'm like always into period novels but I really like Bridgerton so um, if you are into period novels you'll probably really like it if you're not this may be like a good intro for you um, but I've been enjoying that a lot I want to end the podcast with a tweak on my um, bringing me joy section I want to call this something different but I'm not sure what to call it I've kind of toyed with like Happy, happy moments or proud moments or joyful moments, but I kind of just want to like reflect on things that I am pleased with for the week, like little highlights of things. So if you have a suggestion for what we should call this segment, let me know. But I'm just going to bring a couple of happy moments from the week and share them with you. So one of them is that I am so proud of myself for, um, bringing the membership into its second year. I have been head down working on the computer for like the past two weeks developing this new uh, website and learning all these things and I just uh, want to like I'm sharing this because I, I know it's hard to recognize yourself and like look at what you've done and so I am stopping to reflect you know it's kind of the beginning of the year like I feel like I'm not good enough a lot of the times for with things that I'm doing but when I stop and actually think about it somebody from the outside looking in would be like look at all that you did like look at how far you've come and so that's why I want to bring this segment to the podcast but um on a week-to-week -week basis but yeah so this week I'm really excited and proud of myself and and pleased with 
um, everything that I've been able to learn this past year and then in these past few weeks bringing the membership into a new year. <clears throat> My voice is giving out on me now um, for the podcast. I haven't done this in a minute. And then one other lighter happy moment this week is that Toaster has gone out for the first time in his winter booties. We've been training him um, to wear booties because they will eventually at some point like salt the sidewalks here in New York and then they'll just be salted for months and it's not good for dogs paws and so we've been training him to wear these booties um, and it was really cute when he first started to wear them he just did one at first and then we added on a second one we gave him tons of treats and walked him around the house and so today he went out for the first time with all four booties on to the outside world and he did great so i'm really proud of toaster and us for like doing the long game and training him to get him ready for the winter thank you so much for watching this episode it's so good to be back and we will be uh we, I don't know who we is, me. <laughs> well, I will be back every single week. We're back to our regular schedule of podcasts. So I will see you very, very soon. Bye.